The city of Albany, set among the peaks of Mounts Melville, Clarence and Adelaide, is alive with art and history, shopping, diverse food options and has adventures of all kinds right at your fingertips. While the town is a great modern space with everything you need, if you actually take a second to stop, look around, you can not only see, but you can really feel the history that surrounds this place. The settlement of WA South Coast was a race between the Dutch, French and English, all of whom have been dropping in for a visit since the 1600s. In 1826, Major Edmund Lockyer arrived on his ship, the Amity, and founded a British military outpost. A replica of the Amity now sits just west of the brand new Albany Entertainment Centre on the town's foreshore. Albany became the first official settlement of Western Australia and was also the last part of Australia thousands of young men and women saw as they left for the battlefields of World War I, many never to return home. In 1893, the Princess Royal Fortress on the top of Mount Adelaide was built. It was the first federal defence of Australia when it opened, and it is here in the Heritage Park the National Anzac Centre is situated. The centre is a commemoration of the Anzac involvement in the First World War when the first Australian and New Zealand convoy departed from Albany on November 1st, 1914. What is the significance and, and what does it mean for Albany actually having the Anzac Centre here? Look, it's absolutely amazing. For us, it's really uh, one way of recognising the past and the history, the military history that's associated with our city. Um, we're very proud to say that we've got the first and only National Anzac Centre and it's a real draw card for our community and it really gives us an opportunity to pay respect and tribute to the people that served in World War I that left uh, from right here in front of us. What do you think the visitors come to see here? Oh, I think it's a point of reflection as well and it gives people an opportunity to understand what has happened in the past. This is the reflection room we're in right now. How many names are scrolling through here? So there's just over 41,000 people that served in World War I that, that actually left in two convoys from Albany and this pool of reflection actually scrolls through each of those names and I think it takes over a week to actually do a full rotation. From here you can stroll up the hill to the convoy lookout or take in the incredible views from the Anzac Desert Corps Memorial atop Mount Clarence. At the base of the mountain is Middleton Beach, one of the most popular places in the town and it's easy to see why. Sheltered from the swells of the open ocean by the islands and headlands of King George Sound, it is ideal for swimming, snorkelling and new adventures like stand-up paddleboarding have really taken off here. It's so easy to picture the perfect day, afternoon or even evening down here. Just a quick stroll down the beach, a jump in the ocean and then grabbing yourself a coffee or a drink or even a bite to eat at one of the many cafes, restaurants and bars, all within easy reach. Being located on the spectacular southern coastline of WA of course means there is an abundance of beautiful beaches to explore. Situated on the Tondirup Peninsula, which shelters Albany from the Great Southern Ocean, are some of the area's most extraordinary natural features. This place, as you can see, is certainly wild, but it's definitely worth a look. Right behind me is the Gap, and just over there is the Natural Bridge. The Gap is an impressive and imposing rugged granite channel carved out of the stone cliffs by the incredible power of the ocean, forming a spectacular sheer drop of almost 25 metres. The Natural Bridge is another granite formation where a giant rock bridge has been created by the sheer power of the sea. This is just one of the amazing locations on the southern coast. Today, Albany's historic whaling station is the only experience of its kind in the world. Once whaling played an important economic role in Albany's existence, but in 1978, what was the last working whaling station in Australia finally ceased operation. 
What makes this experience so authentic is that when the Chains Beach Whaling Company called a halt to its activities, workers literally downed tools and walked away. What you see here now has been preserved to remind us and is also a place to appreciate whales in their natural element. Here you'll be immersed in the stories of the workers, the whales and their place in Albany's economic and social history. Albany is home to many award-winning locations, but this one right here is a little bit extra special. It really is world famous, so let's go find out why. The Great Southern Distilling Company sits on the edge of the Princess Royal Harbour and the Cellar Door Tour is a relaxing way to experience their impressive portfolio of products. And who better to tell us the story than the man that started it all, Cameron Syme. I think I could say that I'm standing with the equivalent of whiskey royalty right now, Cam. I'm feeling very privileged. Uh, talk to me about Albany. Why did you start here? Well, Kate, we had about 16,000 kilometres of travelling uh, and 16 years of research uh, before we decided on Albany. This was the best place to be in terms of the climate, the access to great grain, great water, and from my point of view, it was just a fantastic family spot to live. In April this year, we won World's Best Craft Whiskey in America, a very credible, serious competition. Uh, and that whiskey that won there followed up then with uh, double golds in San Francisco. And then last week, a, a gentleman called Jim Murray, who's the, the most influential whiskey writer in the world, uh, called us the best whiskey in the Southern Hemisphere. What do you think this distillery does you know, for the region of Albany? Well, we know we've had uh, people come from Japan and Holland and Sweden, India, Scotland even, who have come to Western Australia just to visit the whiskey distillery. You know, Albany's a great place for kids. There's fantastic beaches, really good things to do, and perhaps we add a little bit of that adult entertainment. The Great Southern Wine Region is one of the world's largest wine producing areas. Not far down the track, the charming and rustic Orange Tractor Wines is all about organic sustainability, be it in the food they grow or the wine they produce. This property with just eight acres of vineyard, a mixed fruit orchard and pottager garden has found international attention and acclaim. Back in town is the amazing Liberté Albany, a Parisian inspired bar and restaurant inside the historic London Hotel. Its aim is simple, to serve fun French Vietnamese food and drinks to match. Rumour is it's the first licensed venue in Western Australia. Wow. So it is the original pub, really. So what do you think a place like Liberté brings to Albany itself? It's unique in the way it looks. Uh, what we do is unique. And I think also one of the things I set out to do was to provide a venue that celebrated culture and also gave voice to small producers. That's how I like to almost describe what I do. I, I do French, Vietnamese, interpreted through great Southern produce. It's a little taste of Paris right here in Albany. 